well. I have a special guest today. Someone that um I'm be shocked. I just sh- I just sh- shoot the shot and for some reason he answered the email. This is of course you heard him cuz he's had a very eventful last 2 days. I guess today Nick has always been Calandra. I think it's been yeah, 48 hours almost. Eh, not quite 48 hours, but very close. Mm-hmm. Nick Calandra, how are you? I am uh I am tired, but I'm uh kind of wired and and full of adrenaline just from everything that's going just the, all the range of emotions and I mean you hours. I mean you have just completely transformed your life in about 2 days. I I imagine that is a transformative experience. Uh yeah, I mean it, it really hasn't even sank in yet. Um I haven't even had time to process that you know, I was fired and I lost my yeah. salary and its benefits and everything. It's just uh <laughs> And then you are pretty much uh, doing what you were doing by yourself now. Yeah, and uh, with more attention than we've ever had before. It's not even, and, it's not even comparable. Well, before we jump into that, I have you for an hour, so let's get into it. I do want to do a quick, let's just do a quick summary. You found yourself, of course, at the escape of your editor-in-chief for, I want to say, actually, how long was it? Uh, was we it? Were about to, I was about to be there for... Uh, well, I'm four and a half years. Five oh, years okay, I thought July. it was three years. So I was like, I actually, because I, I can't find the right date. It's fine. So can you walk me through how you find yourself at Escapist? Let's bring up everyone to Steam. And sure. We, how'd you find yourself there? And then we can go from what happened two days ago. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was writing about games all the way back in 2009 uh, when I was a freshman in high school. I, yeah. Uh, was uh, a little bit too addicted to games, very introverted. And uh, my parents were like, you need to find something else to do. And I was like, all right, I'll uh, write about video games. Why not? Mm. And uh, take that a few guys on like PSX extreme. This, I think, I think they're still around, but uh, these, these three guys from Australia that I just read their comments and like, they were, they were good comments and written well, as far as I knew as a dumb, you know, 13 year old. Uh, and I was like, hey, you guys want to start up a, a game outlet together? I'm like, sure. And like, okay. So we started up this thing called Titan Reviews. It was the worst website you could ever imagine. Mm. We had to drag and drop every element of every page we made. Because <laughs> I didn't know what a WordPress was back then. So, Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I drive with that very well. It's when I first started doing these things. You know, everyone tells you, like, just start because it's going to be terrible. And it's true. You, you are just awful. You have no idea what you're doing. And you only yeah. really learn by doing it. Yep. And uh, did that for a while. And, uh, you know, one like one day review code started showing, like, review copies started showing up at my door. Ooh. And, you know, my dad would, you know, get the mail and, like, was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's a free game. He's like, what do you mean you're getting free games? <laughs> well, I'm writing about them. They want me to review it. He's like, they, what? They're just sending you things to review now? I'm like, yeah. And I was like, I was like, okay. <laughs> so I found my way around uh, continuing to play video games as a job uh, yeah. where I wasn't making any money and then getting them for free. So, like, I you know, can't really complain about that. Of course. Um, but, yeah, I did that for a while. We, we started up another kind of dumb site, and then we started up, like, my first real site, which was uh, called Only Single Player or OnlySP.com. Uh, I ran that from 2012 to 2016, and then... Google algorithms change and basically killed the site overnight. So uh, by that time I was in college and I was like, I got, I can't like, I can't do this right now. Like, you know, I can't rebuild this site while I'm trying to finish up a degree in in journalism. And so I uh, ended up selling that site to enthusiast gaming. uh, And then I basically thought I had my day with anything to do with games media. Like I was like, I'm in, I'm in the Midwest. Like I don't have any connections to people. Like, how am I going to, how am I going to keep doing this? Um, and then Daniel Dwyer started up NoClip uh, mm. right at the start of 2017, I think. And he he did a he did a video where he was like out in a field in Poland reporting on The Witcher Three, and like that immediately inspired. I remember that. I was like, man, like I've been I've been, and this was back when he was at Gamespot that he did that. Um, but I was immediately inspired. Like, man, like you know, I, I want to go travel the world and meet people and like actually go cover the games that I've been covering from my bedroom for years. Uh, so a couple couple friends of mine and all that started up a thing called Give Me Mentory. We ran a Kickstarter for that, funded a bunch of documentaries on like Dark Siders and Battle Tracers Night War Night War and uh Perception and, and a few other games. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance was one of those documentaries. Uh and then once that was done, like we we'd only had money for the docs and you know, ad revenue on YouTube's terrible. So 
um, didn't really have any, any plan forward. So I actually ended up selling that to Enthusiast Gaming as well. And then they mm -hmm. hired me on as um, managing editor of video at The Escapist um, so that I could keep doing the documentaries. Um, and then also like kind of build out the Escapist video brand and everything. So that was uh, like September 2018, I think. Uh, so from there, uh, did that for a couple of months. And then like my first real big project was E3 2019. And we went and covered that. Uh, and right before that, the former editor in chief before me kind of torched himself on Twitter, uh, getting in a spat with, with stuff over, you know, Gamergate stuff again. And, oh, uh, isn't and that lovely? Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so that, that ended his run. And then, you know, we kind of went, it kind of, the site kind of went without like a true editor in chief for a few months. And then, uh, they offered me the job and I was like, Oh, uh, I mean, this Britain's so tarnished. I don't know. Like, and I was like, ah, eh, well, you know what? It's a good challenge. Like what if I, what if I could take this and, you know, reform it and make it a positive thing. Cause I'd always liked the escapist content. It was always, you know, interesting stuff. It was fun to read. It wasn't, you know, just general daily news and everything that a lot of other outlets do. Uh, and, then, uh, yeah, I mean, it just kind of went from there. Like, it's been a whirlwind of, of four years doing that. And you worked there for four years, of course. And then, I mean, from our point of view, out of the blue, you get fired by the parent company, which is Gamers, G A M U R S, correct? Yep. Okay. And have you been public on why that is? Um, yeah, so they give you a much. formal I mean, just, response, I guess, is is what I should is is a better better well, way of putting not it. Really, um, you know, I'll, I'll preface this like that: we were we were excited. Like Enthusiast Gaming was kind of good at the start, and then uh, it got taken over by shareholders and people that didn't know media at all. Yeah, and it became a shit show. We were on the same budget for all three years we were there. Like people oh. weren't being taken care of correctly or anything. Yeah. Um, so when gamers picked it us, I was like, oh man, this is kind of exciting. Like it's a fresh start, and you know they they were good. Like at the start, like we in, got investment and everything from them. They wanted to actually grow the brand. I think they had every intention to really grow us. Um, but you know when you look at a channel like the Escapist and you see Zero Punctuation is doing three hundred thousand views. Yeah. And then our other content, you know, it's from new people. Like we, you don't you don't find a Yahtzee anymore. You don't just find them and bring like because why would they ever work for why would they a, ever a corporate company when they could just go out to Patreon right yeah and like I tried to explain that at Enthusiast Gaming I tried to explain that at Gamers and it just was never taken into account and I'm like I I'm sorry like <laughs> there isn't <laughs> another Yahtzee that's gonna come do this unless we find somebody new and grow them and um, that's actually kind of year... shocking that they didn't see it as a you better be lucky that we have this guy. Like, yeah, like, well, they, I, like I, what, yeah. why is he even still here is another thing was like, I mean, he could probably go do this himself and not need any of us. But of course, um, I'm sure he has his own reasons on why he didn't do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, EG was kind of the same way. Like, yeah. they're like, you know, find the next Yahtzee, find the next Yahtzee. I'm like, <laughs> find the next Yahtzee. <laughs> that's, that's looking for even less than a needle in a haystack. Yeah. Like, it's I, like a diamond in the haystack. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you're going to just buy somebody's audience. But the problem yeah. with that is you buy if you hire somebody that has an established audience and they come work for you, the second they leave, that audience has gone with it. So it's not a good investment. Yeah. Um, and so like our, my entire mission was to like find people a talent, grow them, get them in their full time after, you know, they prove, prove their worth and everything. And, yeah. you know, um, the only, the only way you keep them is by giving them a full time role so that they can keep growing. Like it takes time. It takes a lot of time to build an audience um but you know corporate corporate companies unfortunately like they hire teams like ours and they want a very quick return on it yeah and then when we don't get that return you know i get fired so i mean that's that's basically what it was it was just they invested a lot over the last year and like we were super appreciative of that they paid us well like they treated us well for the most part um and then you know like the warning signs kind of started coming because i only I was actually not just editor in chief of the escapist there. I was uh YouTube strategist is what they called it, but I mean like I was really the head of strategy for all of their video. You were and... called a YouTube strategist? Yeah. Wow. That that definitely 
that sings of we don't know what this is. Yeah, it, it is, YouTube it is strategist. I don't even think YouTube knows its own strategy, let alone hiring someone with the the name YouTube strategist. Yeah. yeah. So you know their their kind of take on it is you know if you put out more videos, you're gonna get more views and. I don't think that's done this as long as I have. You know, is that's not true. It's yeah. never true. Right. Um, so, you know, it's fighting a lot, a lot, a lot against that. Like they wanted Jotsi to do even more content. And like, he's reviewing a game every week. He's doing extra punctuation. He's streaming. He's on the podcast. Like he can't, he doesn't have time for anything else. Like he's reviewing a game every week. I don't. And for whatever reason, like corporate companies seem to forget, like you have to play games and watch yeah. tv and movies yeah. to cover do cover things mm -hmm. so yeah. they're like no you need to do that on your own time gamers didn't say that but you know that's yeah, you know, yeah that's, an, that's the implication yeah and I'm, I'm just like i you know i knew the writing was on the wall for me uh probably a few months ago when like you know we got we got hit with some big lofty goals and i was just like there's no way there's no way we're doing that yeah and so um and you knew every, yeah i mean I've 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 seen it happen six different times already. So. And now you yeah. now you bring up the lofty goals and all these things. You said you kind of knew the writing was on the wall. Now, from an outside point of view, uh, and I'm just going to be honest here, this uh, this worked, frankly, so perfectly in so many ways. It almost does seem planned. Is that something that maybe at that time you discussed with some people? Like, you know, maybe I'll leave and we might go do something else. Um, no, not really. Uh, I mean, we. You know, we're we're a team of of talent. We're not, you know, just another website that people are just creating content for. You know, like we we knew what we had. Everything that we built, you know, was basically independent as it was. You know, the subscription services. We we did all that. We did all the live streaming. We knew we knew how to make money. Yeah. Um, and that's something that like I think a lot of people in games media just don't know how to do is cultivate an audience and be transparent with them and actually drive real money because. 300,000 views on a, on a ZP video is great, but it doesn't really make any money on yeah. ad revenue. So how do you, if you want to create the type of content we make, it's gotta be, it, it's gotta be fan funded. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, you can't really make money in a classical sense of like, you have, you have a web yeah. page and, and people come to it and these things, right? You have to find revenue from different ways. And I would love to talk about revenue um, in a little bit. Um, before we get to that though, uh, I do want to say a couple of things and uh, I want, <laughs> Uh, I did f put in my email. Um, you made it public uh, pretty immediately when you were fired. You refused both an NDA and severance, of course. Uh, one is tied to the other one. First off, that's incredibly respectful. You, I mean, I, I don't know. You know, no one knows how much you made other than you, but, you know, severances are generally pr pretty good, and NDAs are, you know, they are incentivized for you not to say anything. And it is quite commendable that you refused both things, which I do respect very highly. And I know everyone out there respects highly, and I, I actually do think it's in part to why you kind of exploded a bit because people saw that as a very good honesty play. And that is very respectful. I don't, what, what made you, were you just scorched earth? Like, no, I'm not doing it. Uh, or was there some other uh, motive that maybe wasn't as negative as I'm putting it? Um, I mean, I, I have no problem sharing what they offered me. They offered me three weeks of severance. Oh, I oh, wow. Wasn't it wasn't even worth taking. Not oh, for, wow. Okay. Not for wow. a long, not for a long term play. Interesting. Um, so it was a, it was a st strategic play. Absolutely. To not yeah. take the severance. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, also... that's insulting. Uh, if I may yeah, say, I, 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 that is quite insulting. I, I assumed it was three months. That's what I was. I was like, well, they don't want you probably talking about a lot of this. So they're, they're, they're going to try and sweeten the pot. That is quite insulting. And I probably would have reacted a little more extreme than you did, but you at least took it very, uh, very well it seems yeah i yeah i mean i'm <laughs> honest i could have used the money i you know i just paying for a house but you know, yeah like, uh, <laughs> knowing me like even my team is like you can't sign an nda you won't shut up oh <laughs> so, yeah so, i mean it, well and it's not like it's not about like getting back at gamers or anything it's just like i was always um uh, with the escapist audience very transparent about why and how we did things and that's why yeah. we drew so many subscriptions because like we have a quarter. We have a quarterly report with our audience every every quarter, where I just go through like I did here's hear what that. we're doing, here's what we've got coming up, like here's how we're making money, here's where your subscriptions are going. Um, so I mean, we like I said, you know, we spent the last five years really running on our own, our corporate 
corners just really paid us a paycheck and that that was really about it i mean we sold our own sponsors we did all of our own branding we did all of our own promotion we did everything like that you do say we if i can be a little more specific do you mean you as in like just the video team or you as like the collective of escapists that is like doing the day-to-day yeah the collective like you know marty and 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 yeah you know omar and everybody like we all we all played our parts in it um we have i mean obviously you've seen it with how second wind is going like that doesn't happen with just me this is a team that everybody knows what they're doing you don't you, you tell them I, I tell Omar, hey, I need a graphic for this. He goes and gets it. I tell him, Marty, I need a, I need a report for this. He goes and gets it. Like it's, we are, you know. I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, you got like, did you guys plan this or anything? It's like, no, we really didn't. Like, <laughs> we had an idea of like we, like I said, I, we kind of knew the writing was on the wall. So I'm always, I was prepping a little bit to be like, okay, I know I'm, I know I'm gonna get fired because basically the catalyst of that was uh, about two weeks ago uh, they scheduled a uh a meeting for the ceo the cro and my boss over video strategy well i wasn't invited to that so i mean like how <laughs> obvious is it then wow <laughs> your time's coming to an end yeah so i yeah i mean so i started like drafting up like what do we what do we want to do and but we already had the framework for everything we wanted to do is like okay we need to come up with a brand name so we spent like an entire evening just shooting out names and then i watched yeah. um the intro you guys did today uh at about noon um as of recording uh dark souls stuff was thrown around you see you said bonfire i believe was one of them there's a couple things like that yeah we originally settled, settled on the bonfire but there was a lot of competition for that already you know, i imagine big uh x x s x m podcast with two well-known comedian comedians that have that but uh but yeah, we we thought about that. We thought about the getaway, but we we're like, eh, we don't want to sound like vindictive over nah. doing this, and it doesn't really roll off the tongue. And then, uh, yeah, Jack Packard uh, came up with the name Second Wind. And he just threw it out as like a thing, and then uh, we were like, wait, Second Wind? That sounds awesome. That's, that's a great name. Awesome. I mean, I I literally <laughs> have it in my notes. Second Wind, great name. I, I, like that's one of those names where I'm like, God, that's just yeah. per- that's perfect. I mean, it really is to me. It it like it it fits every way you think about it and, and i love it I, I was wondering if that was like first choice but you guys were just throwing out ideas that's that's all i love uh organic things uh, yeah. uh especially yeah, like so that we... i have no creativity that's why this is called the easy cheapest <laughs> comment it doesn't even make sense but the, that second set second wind that is a great name yeah we, we decided on the name like i i had a color palette in my head and i threw it over to javid starrett who, who runs a youtube channel good blood and uh, he's like, yeah, I want, like, I want to help you guys. I'm gonna do this pro bono for you. And wow, whip up a logo, and then that's a beautiful it. logo. Yeah, we only animated it last night. Like that was all done. <laughs> yeah, you did all this in pretty much 24 hours. Like Patreon page, your logo. Of course, you can all go and look at these things. The YouTube's, uh, Second Wind, all these things. You can go look at all this, and all this was done pretty much in 24 hours, which is. Which which is part of the reason I was like, did they plan this? Because this is all it seems so perfect. And then I watched the intro and I was like, okay, no, they didn't plan this because it does seem like you guys are almost working on ideas while you guys are talking. Almost where I was like, oh, okay, yeah. So this definitely like seems like you guys spent like probably five hours just what what does our contest schedule look like? You know, and, and like working through everything. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And I mean, uh, you know, same thing. Like we're just really. We have a framework at Escapist. We want to keep doing what we were doing at Escapist. It was working. We were we were growing year over year with all of our subscription services and everything by a lot. Uh, so we we're like we we can do this. We were all we were all pretty confident. Like it didn't take long. You know, after after I got fired and we just kind of like we're like, what are we what are we doing? Like, are we are we following Nick? And everybody's like, yep, I'm going, I'm going. And we're like, okay. You and you we're say that I I have in my notes literally um everyone left with you pretty much i mean pr- very close to everyone you're the, uh, i believe you said on the intro everyone in the video department and i don't know how many from you know writing i don't know how many people actually worked at escape us it seems to pretty i mean pretty much everyone if not everybody left which yeah, I mean, speaks uh... to you more than any like you know I, I i love uh communication all these things right but actions all you know the classic actions speak a lot of words you know it's it's beaten to death but that that speaks to you more than anything you ever can ever do right that many people getting behind your back i think is i mean first off it's crazy and second like 
them immediately being like, yeah, no, we're out, you know, and then we'll, you know, I'm sure some of them are staying with you, if not, you know, most or not, if not all of them, I don't know how that's going to work. But that was crazy to see because it literally on Twitter, I see it happen. And then one person, then one person, then more. I was literally going to make a list of everybody. But if I named everybody, uh, the, you would have to leave when I was done yeah. making a list. That's how many people are coming. Yeah, it, uh, I, I, I really don't know the thinking behind gamers on it. I, I mean, it, yeah. they don't know. They, they clearly they don't know. Like you just said, they don't know how this works. They don't come because it's escapist. I, I assume almost none of your fan base. No, they know escapist, right? Of course. I mean, I watched escapist when I was little and that's what me and my dad bought it over a lot too i would go to escapist and watch zero punctuation and that's when i would i would watch avgn and nostalgia critic with my dad all the time and the zero punctuation is just one of those things and then we would and I, I would go on escapist read my stuff when i was little and and, DC. and that was just something to think but everyone going there now is there for you guys you know it's, it's not because it's escapist you can kind of put this to where like you know when like this cornerstone of, of this happening, right, is, of course, Greg Miller and Colin Moriarty leaving IGN with uh, Tim Geddes and Nick Scarpino, right? The four, that's pretty much the stepping stone of every everyone else being like, wait, we can just kind of leave and do our own thing and make more money, and it's just us? And in that situation, it would at least make more sense because it's IGN, right? Uh, it, the, the biggest video game website ever. And to think that they could just get away with this is... Pr- Pretty, pretty 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 crazy it's just clear that they have no idea what they're doing yeah i mean it, I, I mean yeah you know if they're sitting at the top kind of just telling us what to do right and i mean i don't think any i, I mean Yat- yahtzee and i have a very close working relationship now like i you know i've always looked out for him and made sure that like we didn't as long as i was in charge like they weren't going to be able to sponsor zero punctuation and put shit on it you know and they're like, why can't we sponsor ZP? I'm like, the audience will revolt. <laughs> like, he has built his entire name on not towing to corporations and sponsorships. Like, yeah. you don't know what you bought. And, they, you know, this, I, I want to listen to me. And I'm like, I, I understand. Like, we got to make money on it. And, you know, but like, do it through what I'm doing. The subscriptions is working. Like, the merchandise, get the merchandise going. Like, there's other ways to make money than selling yourself out to a you know a raid shadow legends sponsorship raid no shadow to, legends yeah no no offense to the, the the sales team they're just doing their job on the yeah they're not, and they're doing it great yeah, <laughs> they're doing it very well now you brought up raid shadow legends i actually do want to bring um because that's kind of the perfect segue to something i have here raid shadow legends you say that you as part of kind of your revenue model slash announcement kind of thing you're doing here that you will do select partnerships. Now, you didn't say no endemic advertising, which I think was very important. Is that a plan? Do you do you plan on taking money from things inside the game industry, or are you going to rely more on Patreon? What what would what, what what's the situation? Uh, it, it's going to be a mixture of both. So even okay. on the Escapist, like we had a series that was dedicated to sponsored videos, so people mm. knew what they were getting, and we. Like, it's not reviews or anything like that. We would create videos that are like, here's a interesting thing about this game and tell a little story or whatever. Um, you know, like we did the Eve documentary. The Eve documentary wasn't a paid project, but we did a, like, we would have did a work for hire project for them to go make the documentary on their, their uh, Eve Fan Fest event. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Like, we'll have to see. Like, I don't, I don't even know how much the Patreon is making right now because it's like literally updating so fast that it can't keep up, which yeah, <laughs> is crazy. That's a great problem to have. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have a, a week long free trials. So by next week, I don't know, like if we never, if we make enough of Patreon, we never have to take a sponsor. Then great. Mm. Um, Careful. But yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I mean, like we're, we're not in this for profit. Like we were all making good money at gamers. Like, that's, mm. you know, the fact that everybody like they paid us well, like it wasn't. Yeah again it wasn't a terrible relationship at gamers it's just uh, unrealistic expectations and yeah. not giving what we were doing was working and for whatever reason I, I either i failed at getting that across that like these numbers are good <laughs> <laughs> even if like you know the views are down or whatever we're making yeah. more money per viewer because the analogy i always gave them was like do we want three hundred thousand dollars i mean three hundred thousand views and if if you've ever ran a YouTube channel, which 
none of these guys have. That's the problem. No, they don't yeah, yeah. they have no idea what they what Yeah, they never ran our YouTube channel. So 300,000 views, maybe $1,500, $2,000 in revenue. Maybe, yeah. Or is it, it going to be easier to get 10,000 people to give us two bucks a month? Yeah. That was always my strategy. And like, I don't, I, everybody I talk to seems to get it. Like, that makes so much sense. Oh, uh, yeah, like, I, I would, yes, I would definitely, yeah, I, would eat gla- I would eat glass to get to get that uh, situation yeah. right there. Like, yeah. like <laughs> so, we were on track to do it. And then you go to my bosses and they're like, that doesn't make sense. I don't, that, oh that's my not God. Enough. And I'm like, that is why. Yeah. I mean, that, that's crazy to me because. I don't I don't pretend to be smarter than a lot of these people, but it's just that just doesn't compute. Like, how do you not understand the give and take that this is like, you, like who cares if you have a million views on YouTube? Well, like, it, it, who, I mean, that used to be the game. It's not anymore. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of not been the game for like 10 years. I mean, I, I don't know. It's It's been a very it never, long time. It never, it never should have been the game because yeah, it's, it's not reliable revenue. Like we got we literally got the escapists to a point that every single month I knew what we were going to make. Wow. And there is no other outlet that I know of that can predict their revenue like that. No. Like I knew between from subscriptions that I knew every number of what I was doing on the escapist and it just, you know, I got fired for it, whatever, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, yeah, it, it really is just a story of, you know, you hired a talented team. You don't get that kind of talent for cheap. And, you know, a lot of, all the gamers' properties are built under SEO, which is smart. Like I'm not, you know, I have no problem with that. Like SEO is a foundation of a lot of websites, and you use that you're supposed to use that money to fund your original content, like the, the actual SEO's stuff backbone. that people should go to. Yeah, yeah. And if you have both, which is what we were building, then it works because you have the yeah. foundation of SEO driving constant traffic, and then you get fan funding, and it grows. Um, but. Yeah, just it's it's the chase for profit for this kind of stuff. So, end of the story is like what we just what we wanted to do and what we were doing wasn't compatible with what gamers wanted. Uh, I wish I wish things would have gone down better because like I I like really did respect my boss and everything like that. Like there's a lot of good people at gamers. Um, so however however this decision came about and clearly like it wasn't researched because I mean. Yeah, Yahtzee immediately left after I got fired. So, I mean, that's like, <laughs> again, you didn't, know, speak- you didn't know what you hired. You no, know, yeah, like, it doesn't. And, and and it's clear that, like, they they completely underestimated your pull there, too, which is like, how do you not? It's I'm, it's still like, how do you not know these things? I don't know. It's, and again, it's, never, it's obvious they that they never. Our, yeah, they, they didn't watch us. Content, <laughs> yeah. They didn't watch our live streams. Like, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know how you look at what we were doing and how like much I community communicated with the community and not realize like how integral I was to keeping everything running smoothly, <laughs> but they didn't want maintenance, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, um, I want to ask you a question. I, I'm sure you saw, um, I was very jealous of this, by the way, Paul Tassi wrote an article about you and he used, um, the, one of the funniest things I've ever seen, which was like the, the um Yahtzee character like smothering it like a guy in the water. So it was, um, it was hilarious. I was like, oh my god, that would be a great thumbnail idea, but whatever. Um he literally opens the article, and I'm sure you read it. Um when people ask me uh how should I get into games journalism, they say don't. Now I ask you is are you starting a sequel to Escapist? Or is this a whole different, like, hybrid thing that you guys want to start here? Or are you taking the track of, like, Games Media is dead slash dying, and we just can't really do the way we did it at Escapist, so we're doing this kind of live stream slash X slash thing we're going to do over here? Yeah, I mean, I I haven't described Escapist as, like, I mean, the, the, the website's one thing, right? But the video side of it has never really been games media in that sense. It was like we just were a collective of people creating cool things together. Um, yeah, I mean, like the... I'm fully... The the corporate games media model has been dead. It's right. been dead. And the only way these these conglomerates are surviving is buying up all these websites, farming them for SEO, and paying very little to do it you know they're not like when you look when you look at the landscape today like what website has 
name talent that you like go there for anymore. You know, like IGN still has Ryan McCaffrey and a few other people yeah. there's doing stuff. GameSpot, you know, has uh, Tamur and, and Lucy yeah. and all that. Um, but I mean, like, like, do you know anybody that really writes on Polygon anymore? Or, God, no. Uh, you know, and like my entire philosophy is like, I mean, I, I want to when I watch a review, I want to watch from skill up because I know what his tastes yeah. are and I want to listen to what he has to say. Like, that's why people come to Yahtzee. And so we create more people with talent and and give them a space to grow and their and let their personality shine through like that that's the only viable way forward for a lot of these sites unless you're just going to be an seo farm now so i guess i, I don't know i guess maybe i missed are it will there be a a part of the patreon will there be anything to do with i guess you kind of did answer it with so you're going to be specifically focusing on the video side of Escapist. Oh yeah, yeah. We're not doing we're not doing the website. Or okay. That stuff. I okay. Mean, so you, it will just be um, never you guys say used to, never say never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, never say never. I mean, like Darren Darren Mooney, like his in the frame column on the Escapist is a beloved column series that we were running, and like you know we're gonna we're gonna take him back to video and all that and really grow his audience there, especially with the momentum we've got now. I'm so excited to get him in front of a video audience again because that was like one of our most proud we were super proud of that series on the escapist but it never really took off it did like 10 to twelve thousand views because it was you know video yeah. game focused channel we've got a chance to like reset the mold there and kind of do everything but um yeah th it's just there's no there's no easy way to make money off written work unfortunately unless you tie it behind a subscription model and like maybe maybe we do do a newsletter with his column or something attached to it as like a paid subscription thing but um, or it right could be now, like a like tier on just, Patreon or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. For right now, we just want to take what was working, get our get our content lineup back up and running like we had it on the Escapist, uh, and then go from there. And like, you know, I, I have no idea. We're planning on a Kickstarter. Maybe maybe I saw that the written part as a stretch goal or something. Yeah. I, I love that. Like, or something is like clearly like, I, you know, we're doing it. I just don't know anything about it. I, and I love that. It's rugged. I, I like the the go getter attitude. And I will say, I do want to make this um, a point in the show. Um, you hadn't debuted, and I was fiddling around, you know, when I was gra gathering notes and these things. Um, you reached, I want to say, 40K subscribers on YouTube before you did a video. Uh, it was probably more than that by the time you actually went live. And then when I checked, which I think it was around 11 today, you had like 931 members on Patreon again without anything on there. Uh, and I don't know if that includes followers or paid tiers. I have, I have no idea because I think they put them together. This I don't know. I don't know. But um, and then you do have uh, three tiers, which I do love the simplicity with the Patreon tiers. I think this is very good. I think people get a little crazy with the tiers. You guys did great. You just literally have a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. It's perfect. Five dollars. You get a week early, which I was shocked to see. I was like, wow, you're going to be working out like a week for your Patreon behind that. That's that's very cool. And then um ten dollars for like credits and sponsor free videos too yeah uh I, I i run all that stuff so i like to keep it simple it's too much of track if we do anything more than that so <laughs> just uh but we i like our our previous audience at the escape is like knows like how much value they got for what we offer them and you know like we don't want to you know they and our audience is like super generous too they Sign up for the Patreon. Um, they even go over to YouTube memberships and get a membership there at the one dollar level, just so they can have a green name and chat and show that they're supporting. Oh, that's and cool. And they come into live streams and give us super chats. And yeah, you know, once we get merch going, <laughs> you're gonna they're gonna be there for that. So um, I don't know. I just you know they're supporting us and letting letting us live out our dream. Like there's no reason to you know try to nickel and dime that or take advantage of it. And unfortunately, like at, at gamers, like massive respect we had to make more money so like okay how do we make more money well i guess we have to lock you know the word fuck behind a paywall there. people are making fun of us for that rightfully so like I didn't yeah that. yeah that's so, silly i remember that was like a selling point i think um i think yahtzee said on the stream where he's like i i can say fuck again <laughs> i was like what yeah, the yeah, hell are you it, talking about to be to be fair it did double the patreon and then it fired <laughs> after that so i mean like, <laughs> it wasn't good enough <laughs> i guess i guess i got fired over fuck i don't know <laughs> i guess i got fired over fuck okay um 
I did find it funny. You are listed as you listed yourself as the content director. I love I love that. Was you just looking for its title? No, we um. So is that like a real we, thing? I have no idea. By the way. Yeah, yeah. We um we built out a whole board over the last over the last forty eight hours, like with an organization structure and everything, because we all oh, had wow. our roles. We all had our roles back at um, gamers. So like I, you know, editor in chief, director of content, whatever I was. Um, you know, Omar is our, our lead media producer, but now he's head of, he ended up becoming head of production at Gamers, and now he's head of production here. You know, Jack Packer, D and D and commercial. He was helping get merch and all that business stuff ready to go. So yeah, and you see why people said, think this was pre-planned. Like that, that's a lot. I mean, geez, yeah, you. I know you said you haven't slept. And now, obviously, yeah. you have not slept because, like, no. what, how did you do any of this in like yeah, two days? Yeah, I mean, we were. I mean, we're we're still nothing's nothing's like really set up it's it's all shoot stuff together like you know there's just the there was no way like there was no way we could not take advantage of how much attention we had on ourselves we were like and it was very wise you you jumped on it which is which is you know not not everyone does that they'll be like you know next week there'll be a patreon is it no you you jumped right in which is exactly how the internet works you jump on soon and while the fire is going while the bonfire is kindling whatever you want to say my my hope with how everything played out was like it, it's gonna remind people of Deadspin and what they did because like I was so mm. inspired by yeah. them doing that and just saying screw it like no we're not gonna take this anymore we're gonna go form Defector and do our own thing and they they post all their financials publicly like they have report the annual reports that they release you know exactly how much money they make you know, you know exactly where it's going. And they're not making a crazy amount of profit. And what the profit they do, they give out as a percentage of bonus to their employees. And then the rest of it goes back and reinvest in the business. I would love we're to do, do that. Ex- we're going to do exactly that with this. Yeah, that I, is I'm so, calling, that is so cool to be like, have like a receipt of like, you know, this is what we're doing with your money. That's yeah, so I'm wise. Following, I'm following exactly what Defector does. They They got it right. Everything they're doing is exactly right. Yes. I mean, and that is something I, I like in my head, I always thought I was like, oh, well, I wonder... Why more people do that? And, you know, it's complicated. I'm sure that's the reason. Like, and like you'd have, you're pretty much making an expense report twice, and like saying like what they're doing with the money. And also, I'm sure a lot of people don't want to say what they're doing with their money. Yeah. Uh, and that's I'm sure another reason. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I hope I hope what we did tells people like you don't, you know, if you have a talented team, like you can do this. Like you don't have to, you know, sell your soul and and <laughs> milk your your talent dry until they quit. Like. People, people will show up if you provide them with something interesting and valuable that they've, and a, and a community that they want to be a part of. Like that's why, that's why really why we're so successful right now in doing this because like people want to be a part of the community. Like we have some, the Escapist Discord before this had four thousand people in it and that was tough to manage. Right. We already have we're going on thirty thousand people in this Discord already, <laughs> and it's tough to stop. And I'm like, oh, oh God, wow. Like, what do we, what do we do now? Here? What? But out of that thirty thousand people, I've banned one person so far. Like everybody's been nice and friendly and like, behind cool. the vision of what we want. Like I can't believe it. It's fucking. It's it. It, it hasn't sunk in yet. Like how, like Stephanie Sterling came into our Discord. Was like, oh my yeah. god, this is awesome. I'm so glad to see this. And everybody's like, oh my god, hi Stephanie. And yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's cool. I, I yeah. would not. That'd be like the last person I thought would. That's cool. Um. Yeah. Really quick, um, you said your mission statement is the same as Escapist to create content which is informative, interesting, and fun. Very simple. Now, this also brings into my question that you said you also have an interest going back in the documentaries and some something that people were shouting from the rooftops and they were very excited about that you'll be able to do more documentaries because they love the Sea of Stars, which, which I also did as well. That was a very, very good documentary. And you also had one of the Atlas Trials. And, of course, you had plenty of other ones, but those no, were the did, two that stuck out to me. We did the Atlas me. Trials one. We just hosted that for Red Barrels. Oh, okay. Yeah. But with with this mission statement, um, how would you – how do you – I guess I should say, how do you apply that? Or is this you saying this is where we're going moving forward and you will be making sure that this – is pretty much the through line through all of your content. And also, are you the one that will be green lighting everything pretty much as well? Or like, are you like going to be, you said, you know, content director. So are you video comes in, you look at, you know, you make sure everything's good. How's that going to work? Uh, no, not, I mean, I did a lot of that at the escapist, but now we, we have like a whole production check line basically where, you know, I, 
I'll work with, you know, creators to kind of come up with the ideas for stuff or they'll pitch me an ideas and I'll approve an idea. Uh, and then, you know, they'll take it with their editors and like my, my team knows what they're doing. I know I don't even, I don't even need to look at our stuff to know like it's ready to go. Like that's so much. I trust my team. Um, but the, the, the mission statement though, is like, it's the exact same from the escapist. And like, if you go look at our content, it's never like, we're never creating content to like piss people off on social media or drive angry rage clicks or anything like that. Like, right. Sometimes, sometimes we have, you know, opinions that will upset people, but it's like, of course we didn't go out of our way to like, just say like, Oh, this is stupid. Like oh, you should hate this. Right. Um, and a lot of that stemmed from like, I have no problem with, with politics being in games or anything like that. Like I, it's, it's interesting. Like you, if you, Inherently, if you cover right. it, if you cover it, right. It's interesting. Right. And that's pretty much what I wanted my team to remember is like, if you, want people to read your stuff you can't go and like talk down to your readership or you know treat them like they're idiots like you want to talk about something political that's absolutely fine just make it interesting yeah just make an interesting video about it and that is something to uh, that i do love that you're making sure people know because we did kind of suffer four years of pretty much like the audience being told that they're dumb or stupid or they should vote the exact way that everyone else should vote or something. And we're like this hive mind that everyone should agree with each other. Like we're some like ants that should follow in line in these things. And that's very refreshing to hear because there are many out there that say that they accept everyone. And then they're like, well, you know, as long as you think like me, it's, you know, I will accept yeah. you. I mean, so yeah, I mean, there's obvious, there's obvious lines across to anybody, you know, that are obvious and then, of course, nobody needs, nobody needs yeah. to explain that. That's right, a, right. a reasonable person, right? But um, I don't know. I'm just some dude on the internet make <laughs> stuff about fucking video games. Like I'm not gonna sit there and tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna tell the dude in Arizona or something how how he should live his life. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, literally, like any anybody that tries to tell me what to do on the internet, I'm like, I don't know you. Like, are you gonna? I I always had the philosophy like, unless you're gonna like if you would walk up to me in a bar and say that to my face, great. If you can't do that, then don't say it to me on the internet. Yeah. Don't say it on the internet. It's, it's very, it's very strange that we do have this kind of like, okay. That we can kind of say anything to each other. And, and I'm very boring on Twitter cause I don't really engage in these things. I, I just like talking with people. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a conversation with a lot of people today about my thoughts on leaks in these things. Cause people are always so dramatic when something leaks. And I'm like, we got to stop with uh, their leaks are interesting because you don't leak Tyson changed an ingredient, right? Like you, you, you leak interesting things. So they're inherently interesting. We shouldn't be being upset that something leaks, right? Of course I'm talking about the GTA six situation, but I guess yeah. that's uh, out of the loot here, I but had time to, I haven't even had time to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's not important, but it, that, that is a situation where I wish we just, as video games as a whole, we just kind of can, we we treated each other better and it looks like that's what you pretty much are doing over there and that's actually something i did see a lot and you said similar things in the 2021 interview you had with sacred symbols that i actually watched to kind of rebuff myself on you ahead of this and you said a lot of similar things and one thing that you actually brought up and i think that's kind of clear right now because if you go through you know people who are talking about you, it does still kind of seem like you are excluded from the group of games journalism, which I think is unfortunate because I don't know particularly why <laughs> um, you, uh, you seem yeah, nice. I, mean, I don't don't really know. But when I go through the replies and who talks, you know, it just kind of seems like no one's talking about this, which is like kind of weird. So it does seem like you're just it, and I hate that because why why do we exclude any anyone for? For anything it's just strange that no like it just kind of feels like everyone's ignoring it which is weird yeah i mean uh vgc covered it but yeah like not yes uh, vgc game industry, andy robinson andy i believe wrote it. it i think uh, uh jordan midler did jordan yeah, midler he, oh, he invited me to the yeah. vgc podcast so i'll go talk to him on there too Ooh. But, uh, yeah i think uh yeah none of the none of the major gaming outlets i think covered it so uh <laughs> besides vgc and the game industry biz and all that so uh it it doesn't bother me like i I'm not, I think, I, I think I talked about it on college podcast where like a lot of the times like people don't realize like how small their audience actually is in the games media space because their colleagues just share their work and like yeah. elevate it. But like how many people actually click through on something on Twitter. And so like, or Twitter, made the money. Yeah. Twitter to me is, isn't a metric that I, I care about. I mean, I do, I do right now because 
I, like I've never had a tweet blow up like that, and I think I've gained like seven thousand followers. Yeah, and Yossi, it blew up. As he's gained like fifteen thousand followers, so yeah. Um, you know, we're gonna ride that engagement for a while, obviously. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I mean, I I started my games media career in the Midwest, and it was hard enough to make connections. And then, uh, you know, when I see a lot of people just like I hate gamers and all and all this stuff, I'm like, I don't understand how you do this then like how do you cover games i don't get it yeah read your stuff and i get i get there's a lot of assholes that <laughs> twitter and of course in games and all that but like if you if you ignore them they tend to go away as, and yeah. maybe i'm i'm probably privileged saying that you know as a, a straight white guy fine um but i don't like we don't give them the space to operate in the escapist community like you come to one of our streams everybody's friendly nice respects us somebody comes in as an asshole the community themselves are like get the fuck out of here i don't want to deal with you and they're gone like you don't you don't let them foster this atmosphere of shit you know they don't show up anymore they're like okay i can't get anything out of this so i'll leave it does kind of seem like we kind of stew on it because uh, and i i do feel like um the games me i kind of just play in a lot of things right when when they write about like x negative thing happens and it's like yeah. you see these no names on twitter is. that are yeah. talking about it i'm like but why do we care about yeah. like what these people are saying and i understand why exactly. you want them to click you know everyone you know you get a lot of clicks when people are mad but it's just i don't know it's getting old because it's been happening for i mean pretty much as long as i've feel like i've been really cognizant of games media where it just seems like this kind of cycle of like you know, something bad happens. We all get angry. We make headlines. We tweet about it. Something bad. Ha- you know, it's just a cycle that keeps happening. And it's, I don't know. I just wish we were nicer, I guess, is is is, 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 the, is what I'll end on that. That's what I uh, I tell people to come to the escape is because that's exactly yeah. what you get with our community. I mean, like, I, I don't know if you were on the, the live stream, but we had 6,000 people in there. Yes. And yes, you we did. Got, we, we, we banned one person. <sighs> people would kill for that, I'm sure. And many people would <laughs> like <laughs> we we had every single person in our slack ready to go to moderate that thing and then yeah. we finished and we're like did we ban anybody like there was one person that needed to be banned like what that's crazy. <laughs> i mean that that's that's crazy and and it would be the worst right now pretty much right you would at yeah. least I, one would think so i mean if it's if this is the worst it is i mean you have a great <laughs> future ahead of you now i only have you for about five more minutes i guess we'll end on this um, what do you see happens here from like from this point on, right? Like, what is the what say? What's the next three months look like? What's the next year look like? Uh, I know, I know that is a know. wild thing to ask you when you're two days off of this. Yeah. <laughs> um. Obviously, we gotta we gotta get our our house in order. Basically, yeah. right? We gotta we gotta register as a business now. Like, we gotta get contracts and paperwork and. <laughs> You know, uh, part of our our part our budget that we put together is hiring an accountant to make sure everything's taken care of that way. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody everybody that's part of this right now is like giving up their pay for probably two or three months, and we all know that. Um, Again, you know, speaks to the trust. That's yeah. I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, it, like that doesn't just happen. Like that speaks to you a lot, dude. Like, and that's something that I mean, I know as as a guy who watches a lot of this stuff and kind of ingrains himself and kind of like how people talk like i've kind of felt like as we progress there's a lot of people i used to watch that i just don't feel like i trust as much anymore or or at least the 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 glass feels thicker or at least it feels kind of one-sided um and just you get kind of denigrated to a couple bucks it feels like and in your situation it just seems like everyone is being supportive you have your pretty much your entire uh, staff leave with you which again i mean i just I, that just shows that a level of both how you work your character and all these things are, are so good and it's just great it's crazy see yeah i mean it's the it's the character of everybody that left too like they, of course yeah they knew what was coming and you know like it wasn't just me that was fired jack jack packer got fired yeah uh. um matt matt laughlin our senior editor who did extra punctuation editing got fired like they they fired pretty much our entire team and then wanted Omar to basically pick up the pieces <laughs> like Omar Omar like I I owe almost everything I have to Omar because like he came aboard we I had like a falling out with friends over uh the gaming memory stuff because we were we were dumb at the time and like didn't put things in paper and all that 
um and you know once it came down to like ownership like, when money I complete money, yeah well yeah. I mean, we didn't we didn't have any money left over besides the leftover kickstarter funds and like we we paid that out to everybody but oh i see um it was just like ownership of of the brand it's like we didn't sign anything but like everything was under me i had to pay the taxes on it and everything so regardless like i had a documentary to do on divinity and like i needed somebody and omar popped up in my email and i was like yeah let's do it man and i had never met him before the first time we met was in belgium to do this divinity documentary <laughs> and right then we're like dude this is we're going somewhere <laughs> that's magic that is magic yeah. i love that i mean this is a a legitimately like a once in a lifetime team and everybody here knows it and mm. you know they're everybody has everybody's back like we've never we've never had any like complications or anything as a team until you know gamers started kind of like sectioning us off from one another and all that and having you know kind of uprooting the structure that i had set which is also very like very loose structure but when they tried to like corner us into like doing certain things a certain way things things kind of started to get iffy um, when, and nobody was really happy at that point. So, um, And I'm sure gamers yeah. gave you a two weeks notice that they'd fire you, right? No. What? Oh no, my God. Was, and we're supposed, was, and aren't we supposed to do that though? Oh my God. That's weird I, how that works. I that was, they'll uh, just fire you at a tip, a tip of a hat, but we're supposed to no, I was, kneel I was, before I was, them. Yeah. I was brought into the day I posted that tweet. I was fired that day. I was yeah. brought into a call and I was gone in two minutes and I was locked out of everything. That's like literally that's why I mean, that, long. I mean, that it just shows no respect. And, and that's how we do this almost. Right. I, I have so many people that I work with and they just, you know, we kind of work on respect for each other and how we're going to, you know, conduct yourself. And, you know, I don't, that I have so many friends I've made through this, this channel and, you know, that's pretty much the currency here, right? Like, you know, you do you do my thing, I do your thing. You know, I talk about your stuff. We have fun online and these things, and you know, we boost each other up. You know, you know uh, was it all tides or raise all boats? You know, whatever. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so it's it's still crazy how they I mean, completely yeah, drop the ball. I imagine the escape is just, is done, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I can't talk about everything because there's ongoing of course. negotiations and stuff, but. Um probably trying to get ip i imagine i'm not asking you but i imagine yeah. you know there's some things that need to be done as you're leaving that you're trying to do yeah i mean i i have no contact with them i didn't sign the termination agreement and anything they they want they're going through other people i'm i'm not doing anything with them i have nothing to say to them um the, the people that fired me for that say like i, I said yeah. there's other there's good people at gamers i have no problem with them um so i yeah i mean i i I was locked out of my email immediately. I didn't get to grab anything. There was no transition period. I don't know what they expected to happen, but I mean, you know, ZP didn't go up today. So now everybody that didn't realize something was wrong. Yeah, that's now, true. Something's wrong. Yeah, not everyone is, you know, uses Twitter and all these things. So I guess that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so ZP is yeah, not going to upload and they're probably just learning now of what's going on. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I imagine like someone like my father um would like probably doesn't know that so I'll, I'll probably send him this interview when when we're done uh yeah, tomorrow i mean just to give you an idea like how crazy this like my phone the entire time i've been talking to you has been going off <laughs> like yeah it's it, has just... not, it has not stopped for 48 hours straight <laughs> it has not stopped i'm sure there's a lot of interested parties and on that i will of course let you go nick thank you so much for for joining me today i know you are going to be very busy. You donated an hour to me, so I very, very much appreciate it. Um, let's quickly go over everywhere that we can find you. Of course, you have the Patreon, Second Wind. And, of course, you have your YouTube channel as well as Second Wind. And then do we have an estimate on the Kickstarter when that might start? I know you said it would fund for the next year, right? So do you have any date on when that might start? Not, not yet. Uh, not yet? Let's, yeah, I basically, we, we've got things... I've. Like I said, we haven't. I have not stopped working, so I already. Have, I imagine. Yeah. I already have a merch provider set up for it. Um, we know what we want to do. We know what we want to ask for. Uh, just the weather of like, you know, we got to put together a Kickstarter video, and that's gonna take some time. So. Yeah. If I can, December first. Doubt that's gonna happen though. So I mean, it'll probably it'll probably be January before we get a launch because like we're yeah we're we're gonna we always take a break at the the week of Christmas obviously with Yahtzee so yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what we get done <laughs> we'll we will see second win of course nick thank you so much you had a hell of the last two days and again i thank you for stopping by you had literally no reason to i'll let you go remember 
Achievers, this was Nick. You can go check him out. Second win on both Patreon, YouTube, and you guys said you were start live streamings tomorrow, correct? So as yep. of recording, you can probably you might be able to actually go watch them actually right now over on I assume Twitch and YouTube. Yep. Yep. Um, we'll be streaming Dokapon Kingdom. It's like a what giant Mario Party RPG. And it's insane. It's, it's an insane game. <laughs> what? Loves it. Tell them to play Baldur's Gate 3, all right. I'll wait yeah, too. Go, How about go that? watch Stoke Upon Kingdom and you're going to want to play it. It's Pro- it's probably. It, it might be like one of those like power watching simulators where I can't play it because I'll like it too much. Because Stoke Upon Kingdom sounds like something I'd make fun of and I know I would play 100 hours of. Yeah. Well, it's like a it's like a Mario Party game that takes like 40 hours to do. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much, Nick. Easy Achievers. This is, of course, out of the normal scheduling. I will have a regular episode ready for you at the normal time on Friday. This will be going live. Like I said, this should be Thursday as I'm recording. As long as nothing goes wrong, I will have a regular scheduled episode to you, of course, as always, on Friday. Until the next time, of course, Nick, thank you again. Thank you. Achievers, go Chief.